What's going on Mopar fam? I hope everybody out there is having a fantastic time. So today, you're probably wondering, what in the world are we doing here? So, long story short, uh, Scott Long, some of you guys probably already know him. He has the red, little red express Ram truck uh, that's all over the internet. Um, can't miss it. It's a red regular cab Ram, and he's got the little Red Express stickers on the side of the door to basically make the truck look like the little Red Express. Anywho, this is his old 545 RFE transmission. And this is his stall converter that was in that transmission as well. This is an edge racing stall converter, and I believe this is a 3400 stall. So, I bought this whole package basically he was selling it mainly for the stall converter stall converter is basically brand new it's got very little passes on it and i wanted the converter to put in frostbite but he threw in the whole transmission for the price of the converter which was basically a still of a deal he did have this transmission actually recently completely rebuilt it has all brand new parts in it and after the rebuild he went out and he did a few passes with it and it actually failed. Second gear, he said, is slipping and that is why he removed the transmission and he actually did a GM transmission swap on his truck with a trans brake. Very cool truck, very cool build. So, what I wanna do is we're gonna tear this transmission apart and we're gonna find out why it sucks, what failed with it, and if we can fix it. So, my plan is, I kind of want to put a fresh transmission in Frostbite before I put this stall converter in. The transmission in Frostbite, as we speak right now, is working perfectly fine, but I kind of hate to pull that transmission down, put a converter in it, and then something happens down the road. I have 150,000 miles on that transmission, and it's still working good. We have a ton of drag racing on that transmission I've towed my boat with that transmission and it's been great but with that said it's probably getting close and with me taking it down I'd rather put either a new one in it or a fresh one in replace of it and then the old one we can go through have it rebuilt or rebuild it ourselves that's my plan is I really want to take this thing apart find out what happened I kind of have a feeling that the second gear clutch pack probably failed in this thing but i have no idea so we're going to tear it apart we're going to find out what broke and see if we can fix it all right so the first thing we're going to do guys is we're going to pull our input and output speed sensors out which are these guys right here it's going to take an eight millimetric socket so let's get them out The one closest to the bell housing, this is supposed to be the input speed sensor right here. And you just kind of wiggle it back and forth and it'll come right out. Just like so. So we're gonna lay that down. We're gonna do the same thing to the output speed sensor. There we go, that one's out. So let's get to the next step. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna spin this transmission around and we're gonna take the line pressure sensor out. And that would be this guy down here. Same tool, eight millimetric socket. And bada bang. And I like to thread my bolts back in just a little bit. That way I know where they went. But that is up to you. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do, guys, 
is we're going to spin this thing over again. And right here in the front of this bell housing is a big, giant, huge snap ring. Uh, so we're going to pop this snap ring out. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to look around and you're, you'll sh you should see a gap. And you're going to get on the edge of that snap ring with like a flathead screwdriver, it usually works, and pop it out. So here we go. There we go. Once you get it popped up, then you just kind of work it around. And one giant, huge snap ring is out. All right guys, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the transmission over on its side and get the transmission pan off. Alright, we got it flipped over, so we're going to take the couple of screws out that's holding the pan on, 8mm as well. And the fluid has been drained in this transmission, but no matter what, you will always still find more transmission fluid inside an automatic transmission. I don't care what you do. So it's always going to be messy. So just be prepared to have a bunch of rags, buckets, and stuff to be ready to catch the mess. There we go. So we got the pan off. And... The fluid don't look terrible, but you can definitely smell, it's got kind of a burnt smell to it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna take our filters off. We're gonna unscrew the, the canister filter first in order to get the big filter off. The big filter has a little T25 torque screw right here. When you take that screw off, you actually have to rotate this filter uh, slightly down in this case because there's a little bracket right here that kind of holds it up and it won't come all the way out until you slide out of that bracket first and with this filter being on you cannot swing it down low enough to get it out of the bracket so we got to remove this filter first for that you can use a big pair of channel locks uh, you can jab a screwdriver through it because you'll be putting a new one on anyways or have some oil filter pliers There we go, got the filter off, and we're just gonna put it in our bucket for right now. Now we're gonna get our T25 Torx, and we're gonna take the screw out for the big filter. And then we're gonna swing this filter down out of this bracket, and then we'll pull it straight down and it should pop out. There it goes. As you see, it's basically just a long tube and it pops into a seal. And yeah. It kind of smells about like burnt rear end fluid. I don't know if that justifies it, but I said the fluid's not really dark. It's not really black, but you can definitely smell it. All right, so. Next step is we're going to undo the bolts holding our valve body in. So we're going to get those loose. Those are 8mm screws as well. 
and they're usually, if you look, you'll see them on the outside going around. You don't have to mess with any of these torque screws. That is what's holding the whole sandwich assembly together. So you want to take out the, the eight millimeter screws only. So here we go. Got those out. I'm gonna move some tools. And we're definitely losing some more fluid here. And that's why I said no matter how much you drain these things, the valve bodies are gonna hold fluid, the pump's gonna hold fluid, just fluid everywhere. So just be prepared. Alright, so now that we have all of our screws out of the valve body and for reference there was one two three four five six screws so now that we got them out we're gonna pull this whole assembly down and you basically just give it a gentle pull down the big wiring connector on the top side of the transmission where your uh, your harness plugs into that will pull through as well There we go. Heard it pop there. A little bit of weight shift there, so be prepared for that. So, there we go. We have the valve body out. And, uh, yeah, it definitely smells. Now that this is out, I can really smell these clutches so definitely something in here got cooked that's for sure so for right now we're just going to lay this in the transmission pan all right guys so the next thing we're going to do is we rotate our transmission a little bit and you're going to need a screwdriver uh, like a long flathead or you know small pry bar or something and we're going to pry out this front cover right here that's in front of the pump and to do that, there's a little access hole back here. Try to bring you guys with me. So right here, we're going to stick a screwdriver in this hole and you'll actually pry the back side of that cover and it'll pop out. Alright, so here we go. A flashlight will also help. Make sure you're prying on the right thing. So we're gonna get it in there. And then we'll start prying and we'll just kind of watch it start moving out here. There we go. And don't be afraid to hurt this because if you're rebuilding the transmission, you're going to put a new one in anyway. So don't worry about tweaking it, bending it, or dinging it, or whatever. It's going to get a new one. So with that out of the way, I'm going to spin this guy so you can see it. Whoa, nearly. Alright. So now, this is your front pump. This is your pump assembly right here. That's what basically makes... Everything happened, the pressure, everything. So that is the pump. All right, so the next step, guys, is we're going to take out our, our pump assembly. There is some 10 millimeter bolts we got to take out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. So we're going to get our impact and take those out.
There we go. All six bolts out. Just gonna collect them up. And we'll just lay them on that front pump cover. Now this technically should just kind of pop out. If not, sometimes you can, in the same spot where we pried the front cover out, you can pry right there and push it out too. But it looks like it's coming out. All right, so there is our pump assembly right here. All right, so just checking this out real quick. I don't really see anything going on here, um, but you can take these apart and inspect them better. But for right now, we're just gonna put it to the side. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna pull out this big drum. The first drum right here, we're gonna pull that out. There we go. Got the drum assembly out. We're gonna lay it on the table. So there's also, there's, you have clutch packs in here. This is gonna be for your overdrive assembly. So we'll check those out. Most likely they're probably toast. So, next on the list, and with his complaint that he said second gear was slipping really bad, most likely is gonna be this next assembly. So there's another big snap ring inside here. Right here, it goes all the way around. And we're gonna take that snap ring out and that is your two four clutch pack so most likely that's gonna be the clutches that's most likely burnt up or something's going on with that uh, as second gear he said was the only complaint that was slipping so we're gonna get that snap ring out we're gonna get our big screwdriver and pop it out this snap ring is much stiffer than the other one it's a lot stronger so you do have to kind of take your time to get it out but just work your way around. There's a bunch of screwdriver holes there for you to be able to pry it out with. All right. Got that snap ring out. Like I said, that one's much beefier. A lot stiffer than the, uh, the one in the front. All right, so now that we got our big snap ring out, we're going to pull out this next section. Don't look like anything's bad there. It looks like the bushings, is, the bearings are still good. So we're gonna have one more snap ring in here. We're gonna have to pop out. This one is much easier to get out than the other one. Alright, so we're going to pull out this gear assembly in here. So this is the planetary gears. Kind of like a rear end, more, more or less. Uh, you can see the gear in the center here. Then you got three side gears. And then you got a gear on the back. And you have a flat bearing right here, so make sure that stays in place. I don't see. Gears seem to be okay. I don't see anything wrong with the gears. No chips or anything. And we should be able to pull out the first set of clutch packs right here. So we'll pull them out. And we're going to keep these together because they go one way. Woo! Yeah, those got hot. 
So let's see what we got here. <laughs> Houston, I think we found the problem. So I must take this apart right here. And you can see kind of the golding on that. Look at the back side of this. See all that purple color? Completely smoked. Definitely got hot. Some, sm some more smoke right there. I don't know why this transmission failed so quick. With uh, having a fresh rebuild. But yeah, something did not go good. But these clutches right here are absolutely toast. They are fried. That is why it's slipping in second gear. And like I said again, kind of like the rear end, uh, like an LSD unit. These are friction discs. They got basically like a clutch material, friction material on them. And it makes a sandwich. And that's basically what applies the pressure to get your power to your tires. So... When those discs wear out, bye-bye transmission, it just starts to slip. So that's basically what's going on. When your transmission takes a, t uh, a dump and it starts to slip, it's because these clutch packs in here are worn out and they're not gripping anymore. So it cannot do what it needs to do. So, I mean, yeah, this transmission can be fixed pretty easily. And, you know, if you did it yourself, pretty cheap. A, a rebuild kit, a master rebuild kit with new clutches, seals everything you can usually get under 400 bucks from what i've seen um but that's what's going on with it so yeah so there you go guys that is what happens usually to your rfe transmission when it starts to slip starts not to pull anymore starts to do the hokey pokey whatever you want to call it the clutch packs are going to be toast um not the end of the world. They can be rebuilt. But it's up to you. Again, really tearing this thing down was not that bad. There's still some more to go. We still got some more sections to go to get to the other clutches. But I think I'm going to call it a day for tonight. Uh, it's getting late. And I got to the part that I wanted to, which was what we expected. Clutch pack toast. So I hope that gives you a good idea of uh, what's going on. When that scenario happens, you know, what kind of goes into taking an automatic transmission apart, what kind of tools you may need, and so forth. So, other than that, guys, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, tap the bell button for the notifications, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.